Hello and welcome to week two venture development. Let's jump right into it. Week two quiz. Just keep in mind that you have a quiz each week. Your week one quiz, the due date is the same as your week two. In consideration of spring break, I moved your week one quiz due date to March 17th. You also have the week two quiz, which is due March 17th. So on March 17th, you will have the week one and the week two quizzes due. Now, um, creating revenue models, um, that's from our textbook, chapter nine, uh, NEC. And what we're going to be looking at is how do we generate revenue for um, our new venture? What are just some types of uh, revenue streams, et cetera? Here's what I want you to focus on. Revenue is essential for all businesses. doesn't matter if it's a for-profit or non-profit. One of the confusing things I, I see students struggle with is they have an idea and they don't care about uh, getting rich, for example, or they have a non-profit or a social purpose, uh, which is wonderful. I, I love social entrepreneurship. But at the same time, if I have a nonprofit, I still have employees. I have overhead in the sense that I have a utility bill. I might have uh, office space. I have uh, computers, um, web access. You have all of the same expenses in a nonprofit as you do in a for-profit. And so for any business, for-profit or nonprofit to be sustainable, revenue must exceed cost. And that's what we're looking at. So we're looking at revenue, uh, the income from sales of goods or services, whether it's for-profit or non-profit, doesn't matter. Your revenue model is essentially your vision and how you're going to generate revenue for your venture. Now, the questions you need to ask yourself, how much are my customers willing to pay for the product or service? You'll have to validate that by actually asking them at, at a later point, but you can do some research and look at comparables you know, the, a comparable product or service is selling for X. So I will initially start in that general area. How many customers do I need? That's huge. It's important to think about that. There's got to be enough customers to cover the cost. How much revenue can I make through sales? If I have more than one revenue stream, what percentage or how much does each contribute? I like to see students try to develop one, two, three revenue streams minimally um, so that you are not dependent. If you have a bad month in sales, you've got these two revenue streams that will help carry you through that bad month. Let's look at different types of revenue models. First one we'll look at will be uh, revenue uh, generated by unit sales. So if I'm a printer, manufacturer, a computer printer manufacturer. I'm selling printers for, let's say, $199 per unit, and I need to sell X number of units per month to cover my cost. Anything above and beyond that would be um, additional revenue uh, profit. Advertising revenue is huge. So if you are selling product, you should also try to generate some advertising revenue. So you look at Google AdWords, and then uh, cost per click, uh, CPC. So um, let's move on. Data revenue model. So Facebook, other social media platforms, gather, collect your data, and sell it to others uh, for a profit. And so they're making money not from just the ads that we purchase as consumers or business owners, but also through the sale of our data. Another type of revenue stream would be this uh, intermediation, which is essentially a broker. So if I list my home for sale, I would typically retain a real estate broker. That broker will meet with prospective buyers and essentially be the intermediary between the home seller and the home buyer. Licensing revenue, huge opportunity for young people. Let's say you have a new product or a new idea uh, um, so we have a prototype of this product. It might be something brand new. It might be an improvement, a significant improvement upon an existing uh, product. You have two options. You can just sell that yourself or you could license your proprietary technology or your proprietary, you know, your intellectual property to a company 
and they would manufacture it and sell it under their own brand name, and that would be a licensing revenue model. You still own the intellectual property, but you are licensing licensing that property to a third party, and you're sitting back and collecting royalty checks. Different types of revenue models, uh, franchise, uh, uh, Taco Bell, number one franchise. So you invest money into Taco Bell, they give you a franchise license, and you are able to open a franchise uh, subject to all of their rules. So the, the great advantage of the franchise model is that you benefit from a proven business model, you benefit from the marketing, uh, et cetera, and the, the gross or bulk purchasing that they do in terms of supplies, et cetera. The subscription revenue model, it's still here, it still works. So if you are selling a product, look at whether or not you can translate that into a subscription as a, a something additional to maybe your, your main revenue uh, system. Professional revenue model. So if you're an attorney, a tax professional, uh, sometimes a financial advisor who gets paid by the hour, you're really looking at um, if I'm charging, you know, $225 per hour, that is a professional revenue model. Typically it's per hour. Utility. So consumers energy charges us based on our consumption of utilities. The freemium model. You need to be careful with this. The freemium model was great when it first came out, was very popular. I think it's um, got to be very much reserved for the app world today, um, or maybe software. I'll download an app. I almost expect to have a period of time that it's free before I subscribe to the app so that I can make the determination whether or not I actually want the app and it does what it needs to do for me. Now, what are some revenue drivers? Customers drive a revenue. Without customers, we have no revenue. Uh, how frequently they purchase from us, um, how we sell our product or service, and, and then our price. Our price is last. So price, um, too many of us focus too much on the price. It is important, but before we get to price, we need to focus on customer. How do we you know, um, develop or learn more about our revenue drivers? We talk with people. Uh, we are making assumptions when we develop a business model, we're guessing. And we need to go out and talk to people in, in many different, you know, face-to-face -face surveys, et cetera, get feedback to validate or invalidate our assumptions. What are the two main drivers of cost when we're doing any type of business? First would be cost of goods sold and then operating expenses. So just being in business. Um, let's focus on COGS or cost of goods sold. You must understand what COGS is uh, to be successful in business. If I have a t-shirt store, well, I could be selling online, doesn't matter. If I'm selling a t-shirt for $25.99 before it's screen printed with my custom work, it comes to me at a cost of let's say seven or eight dollars. That is my cost of goods sold. So I'm selling for $25.99 cost me eight. Okay. So um, that's what I want you to keep in mind with cost of goods sold. The direct or indirect cost of producing the product, add those up. Those are your total cost of goods sold. Those get subtracted from your sales price. What are some other, um, the operating expenses? So if I have a brick and mortar location, you know, I have rent, I have utilities, I have possibly insurance, transportation, uh, taxes, marketing, advertising, legal. I have people working for me, so I have salaries or other wages, supplies, accounting, and then what if I offer my employees uh, benefits? So all of these would be examples of operating expenses. What is an income statement? So each month, once you become successful, the earlier you can do this, the better, but have a snapshot of the money coming in, income, and then the money going out. And so we have 
revenue, 200,000. This is for a year, minus cost of goods sold, COGS, 100,000. Gross profit of 100,000. 200 minus 100 gross profit. Minus now all these other operating expenses. Sales, uh, administrative, marketing, research, depreciation. Um, and then we get down to here, the interest expense, so maybe a loan. And then we get to this net income of 31,270. So this is an annual income statement. Uh, 200,000 200, in less expenses. First, the cost of goods sold, then the operating expenses. Pricing strategies. So we look at our competition, competition-led pricing. Uh, so we want to match the prices of others, or we do uh, customer-led pricing. We ask the customers how much they're willing to pay. Then we do, um, we could look at a loss leader, pricing a product low to drive them to our website, possibly uh, breaking even or even possibly even losing a little bit of money in the hope that they are, once they're at our website, they'll pick up some other items. And let's continue on with the pricing strategies. With an introductory offer, sometimes we will um, sell it at a heavy discount to get attraction or get attention to our new product. Skimming is when uh, we do have very little competition, and so we can charge more. Psychological pricing, you know, 45% off today only. We're trying to motivate people psychologically, take action now. When in reality, that 45%, uh, what is that 45% off of? We're still making money as the seller, but we're trying to psychologically motivate the buyer. What is fair pricing? It's completely subjective. It's whatever the customer principally uh, believes is reasonable. Are you gouging the customer? Bundled pricing is fantastic. If you can bundle more products together um, and give the perception that it's more advantageous for the customer to buy three items from you as opposed to one, uh, it's a win-win for both sides. Cost-led pricing, we add up all of our cost, then add a profit margin, a percentage that we would like to see, and that is our cost-led pricing. Target return pricing, um, we look at the amount of the investment that we've made into the new venture, and what do we need to return, see a return uh, in terms of profit. Value-based pricing, we look at how does our product impact the customer. Again, I'm here to help you at any time, so please uh, reach out to me via email if you have any questions.